When you see a dog with chronic diarrhea, what is your first thought? Is it IBD? Is it an infection? What about food? This study shows that food responsive enteropathy is actually really quite common and supports the use of elimination diets very early on in the diagnostic process. This study does show that food responsive enteropathy is a very common cause of chronic diarrhea. It's important to note because a lot of times we just grab for the antibiotics first. Certainly, this study makes me think a little bit differently about how I might approach some of these dogs that present to me, although frequently when an internist first sees a dog, they've already had a number of things done. Typically, they haven't been dewormed, but uh, oftentimes they have changed the diet. The biggest concern of a food trial in a lot of my patients is they come in very debilitated with really low albumins and quite thin. And so switching their food, something they may not like as much and that sort of thing is oftentimes not particularly desirable. And so we tend to do more of an aggressive workup. And um, certainly immunosuppressive therapy can be helpful if inflammatory bowel disease is suspected, but we don't want to ever just jump into that. So if you have a biopsy that shows substantial amount of inflammation, I have no problem doing a food trial as well as uh, giving them some steroids at the same time to try to help them along. And then we can always uh, keep the diet going and wean the prednisone. Oftentimes they can be weaned off. But in a dog that presents with um, three weeks of diarrhea that's in otherwise very good shape, a uh, food trial is probably the way to go as far as the first step in their, their workup beyond the basic CBC chemistry, fecal flotation, Giardia lysa. Where we've trained, oftentimes antibiotics are the first line of treatment. So dog comes in with chronic diarrhea, I would say 90% of the time, metronidazole would be the first drug to try, even possibly without even doing any sort of diagnostics, just that would be offered and the client would say, yeah, let's try that. And unfortunately, what happens in some of those cases is they do respond. And then as soon as they come off of the metronidazole, the diarrhea comes back. And so oftentimes the recommendation is to stay on the antibiotic for life. And I think this study would emphasize that a lot of those dogs may be actually in a food responsive category. And so a food trial might be indicated in some of those dogs that are uh, suspected to be quote-unquote antibiotic responsive or antibiotic dependent. And we know that there's such an intricate interplay between gut bacteria and fiber and different ingredients and antigens in food that cubbyholing them into food responsive or antibiotic responsive is probably not the right approach. Um, Certainly, we have dogs that are quote-unquote probiotic responsive. Uh, We have dogs that are B12 responsive. So, um, you know, this study did show some uh, interesting findings and showing that food responsive enteropathy is probably much more prevalent than was previously thought is important. But food is probably not the whole story in some dogs. And that's this week's Vetvine Specialty Update.